Yes. That's another one. We're down to about 2,000 troops. Did you know that, John? 2,000 troops. So uh, Syria, we're at, but we kept the oil. So we have some. Was it okay that we at least kept the oil? Yeah. Did I feel bad? Because we have some troops. Oh, you haven't pulled the troops. I said, no, oh, no, we're gone. We pulled all the troops out of Syria. Remember, we were supposed to be guarding the border between Syria and Turkey. I said, why are we doing that? They said, well, you know, we don't. I said, wait a minute, we have an army of 100,000 here, an army of 25, 30,000 here. We got 5,000 soldiers, and that's a very dangerous position. I don't like it. They've been guarding their own borders with different names for a thousand years. Why the hell do we have to be over there guarding their border? We want to guard our own borders. Yeah, 
guys jumping around, 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 we love America, we're going to lower your taxes. Thank you. <laughs> Kamala Harris and 13 members of Biden's Under that theory, this big guy is next. 
it's a sick deal going out there. You know, to do it the way they want would cost $100 trillion. That's more money than this country could earn in a thousand years, okay? To do it right. We don't like that building. The windows are too large. Oh, okay, let's rip it down and build a new one. What windows are you going to have? We're not going to have windows anymore. Environmental. So it's, uh, you know, they love wind too, right? The big windows, the, the, I always say, the greatest graveyard in the world for birds. Just walk down the road. Including eagles, you know, in California they put you in jail if you shoot a bald eagle, right? You go to jail, right? These windmills are not going to matter the sky all day long. It's all in the And yet they want wind. And wind also is very, it's very hard to store the electricity from wind. So if you go home and you want to watch television because President Trump is on and you want to watch one of these Biden and the radical left put your law enforcement in serious danger. Last weekend, two Los Angeles sheriff's deputies were ambushed and shot at point blank range. And we have everybody looking for that creep that did it. And you know, I called him an animal the other night. I said, he's an animal. And we were challenged by some people on the left. He's not an animal, he's a human being. He's not a human being. They got to find him. They got to find him. And the penalty has to be very fast, very swift, and very, very severe. But the anti-police demonstrators, they cheered and cheered when they saw this, and then they tried to stop them from even getting into the hospital. As president, I'll always support the heroes of law enforcement, and I'll fight to ensure the criminals who murder police who indeed get the death penalty. You know, they want prisoners to go too. They want, I said, so what about, like, the Boston bomber? Remember Bernie Sanders? They want all prisoners to go. I said, does that mean everybody Yes. So we sent in a question. Is that true? The Boston bomber is in power to go on. And even Bernie's going like, oh man, let's get into a different question. It's not a good question. But we want to get that. We want to take care of it. If you look at all of the problems that we have, you look at crime, even somebody brought it up today. We're doing a great job relative to other countries on the coronavirus. You know how many names we have? Like 22 different names. I call it the China virus. We're doing a great job. Oh, oh. you want to really see a great job, take New York and some of these other Democrat-run states out of it. You'll see numbers that are unbelievable. Because New York had a very, very hard time. A lot of bad things happened. But you take a few of the states out, and you'll really see numbers. But by comparison to other countries, and by almost all metrics we've done, an incredible job, including the job of helping the world with ventilators and all of the things that we've done. And I think our national security. Why do you the death penalty for cop killers or mass murders? Biden says he wants to protect black lives, but his radical platform will cut short the lives of thousands of African American citizens. The Democrat Party's war on cops has already led to surging homicides in Democrat-controlled cities, yet Biden supports imposing these failed policies nationwide. They ask him, what about nationwide? What about the fact that you just had your Democrat National Convention, where, by the way, we had far many more viewers, millions and millions. <laughs>
and some incredible stories, some very sad stories when you look and see what happened. But Biden's plan is to appease the domestic terrorists. My plan is to arrest the domestic terrorists. Joe Biden is a weak person. He's always been a weak person. And that was in prime time. And prime time was 25 years ago. And let me tell you, he's not old. I always defend him in this. I have friends that are 85, 89, 92, 95, and they're 100%. This is something wrong with Joe. He's right. Okay, he's right. And I have no problem saying it anymore when I watch the disinformation. This, this is not disinformation. This is not. If he's elected, his radical supporters won't just be causing mayhem on the streets. They'll be running the Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Education, and most importantly, they will put Many judges on the United States Supreme Court. We can't have that. We'll have a totally different, totally different country. Radical left judges. And that has to do with your Second Amendment. It has to do with right to life. It has to do with so many different things that will turn your world upside down. And they'll have one, two, three, or four. Whoever's the next president, hopefully that's going to be us. Not me, us. approximately 300 brand new great federal judges, court of appeals judges, 300. 300. Give or take a little tiny bit, but 300, nobody thought that was possible. I want to thank President Obama. He left us 142 openings. Nobody gets left one of them. A federal judge is a big deal. Nobody gets left any openings. He gave us 142 openings. Thank you very much. He, what happened? They thought Hillary was going to win. <laughs> so they didn't push it. And then they said, wait a minute, these polls are getting a little close in the end. And they tried like hell to get some judges in the room, but it didn't work. That's what happens. You got to go and you have to act fast. You got to get it done. Get it done, right? Like we get things done, like nobody's ever gotten it done. <laughs> Oh, he was a great president. He was great. He left 142 judges for the Republicans. He was a great president. Huh? If you're of that side of the plate, if you're of that ideology, and you had a president that left you 142 federal judgeships, uh, I don't think you rate him as doing a good job. Hey, look at what happened in Iraq. Look at what happened with ISIS. Look at what happened with our military. Look at what happened with our vets. Our vets are better taken care of now than they've ever been. Let's face it. It's different. They used to be loose. They used to be great. 
You could sit back. I'm not a drinker, but you could sit back and have a drink. Whatever the hell you're drinking. And now you can't do that anymore. You can't do it anymore. So I have to rely on people in Congress to be my friends. <laughs> we just happened to have a couple tonight. And one of them who's been a, a great warrior and he's doing a fantastic job. I just saw you on television, by the way, Brian. Does everybody know Brian Sal? And a warrior. When the fake impeachment happened, it was a total fit. What do we finish up with the Republicans? 197 to nothing, right in the house. One night, it was a fake impeachment. I got impeached over a perfect phone call of congratulations to the president of Ukraine, who I never met before. Okay? I mean, if you're going to do something, at least know him a little bit, right? I never met him. And then they said it was eight times quid pro quo. That was Adam Schiff, Shifty Schiff. And he went before Congress, and he repeated my conversation, except that he made it all up. Remember, he repeated it. And then I said, ah, fortunately, we had that whole thing essentially recorded. I'm glad I did. But these are very deceptive, deceiving, sick people. And I said, well, he lied because there was no quid pro quo. It was a perfect conversation. But by that time, it was too late because they had already embarrassed themselves by doing it. And Nancy Pelosi was all set. She loved doing it. See, from day one. But she thought it was what Schiff said. When she saw the conversation, she said to the people, what the hell did you get me into? So they could have dropped it, but they said, let's give it a shot. So we won, and other than Mitt Romney, well, we lost a half a vote. He's a Mitt Romney. He couldn't get elected dog catcher right now in Utah. So we have another great one, and he's really a friend of mine, and he's been solid, he loves his country, he loves his state, Glenn Brockman. The man just got elected, and he's from an area that I know very well, we did very well, we got a big, big, fat, beautiful contract that produced lots of jobs, but he was taking a legend's place, so it's never easy to replace a legend that's Duffy, yeah, okay, so. Uh, he was running and uh, we did a lot of work for him and it was great and he reacted very well under pressure. You know, a lot of people don't react well under pressure. They choke! They choke! He was under a lot of pressure and he ended up winning by like 18 points and now he's your congressman. He's doing a great job. You got to vote for all these people. And Sign, though, right? 
Anyway, great job. We love having you, Rachel. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Tonight we're also praying for everyone in the path of Hurricane Sally. We're out there working very hard. We are working in Florida and Alabama and Georgia. We're getting, we have FEMA, we have everybody there. We just finished it. I mean, take a look. We just went to Louisiana, Texas. We're getting hit by some big hurricanes, but we have it under control really good. Our Coast Guard is doing fantastic, by the way. Unbelievable, the bravery. They go into these storms. They go into these zones, they say, how dangerous is it, sir, it's very dangerous. I say, uh, all right. They said, would you, yeah, he said, would you like to try it sometime? I say, yeah, well, no, thank you. I'll make a pass. I think they might have a problem with me for doing it, but I will tell you, they are. You know, in Texas, they say 16,000 people two years ago, the Coast Guard, U.S. Coast Guard. I think there's no brand to me that's gone up more than the U.S. Coast Guard. So it's great that we're getting a new ships. My administration will be by their side through every step. We're working again very, very hard in the panhandle. The panhandle, we love the panhandle. It got hit hard. We spent the last four years reversing the horrible damage Joe Biden inflicted over the last 47 years. We passed record tax cuts and regulation cuts. Nobody's ever done more, more than anybody else has ever done. To keep our family farms in the family, we virtually eliminated the unfair estate tax, also known as the death tax. So if you die in a hundred years from now, and you have children that you love, as opposed to children that you can't stand, does anybody here have children that they don't like or perhaps can't stand? <laughs> Because if you do, don't listen to the rest of this. But if you have a family that you love and you have a small business or a farm or whatever, they will be put out of business and have to go and borrow all the money to pay the estate tax, the debt tax. And it was a terrible thing. We got rid of it. So now you can leave your farm, your small business, and your family. I just hope they remember you every once in a while. Always a difficult situation, but it was. It was ruining farms. They'd have to go out and sell the farm. They'd have to go out and get partnerships. They'd have to go out and borrow money from banks. And then all of a sudden, the foreclosure proceedings, and they've never done that before. They don't have to worry about that anymore. They love your family. That's a big deal. They've been trying to get that. Showing for what? 30 years they've been trying to get that, right? Especially for the farmers because it's that kind of a business. It's a great business, but it's day to day. You have a bad crop all of a sudden. You can't pay interest on a loan to pay your state tax, right? But they lose their farm, so we're not going to have that anymore. We achieved American energy independence for the first time. Biden pledged to abolish American oil, American shale, clean coal, natural gas. He said the fracking, I told you that, but we're not going to let him get away. We'll be, we'll be bringing it up on occasion. For 47 years, Joe Biden crushed the dreams of Wisconsin workers and enriched foreign countries. That's what happened. Before I got here, what was happening with Japan, and we pay our deep respects to Prime Minister Abe of Japan, a great friend of all of ours, a great friend of mine. He's going to be leaving office very soon, like in a matter of a day. And uh, he was a great gentleman. He was a tough negotiator, I'll tell you that. He made very good deals against the United States, but he's somebody that's going to be missed. He's a great gentleman. He championed every special interest, like every special interest, and he sold out on trade. He sold out like almost nobody ever before. Earlier this year, I kept my promise to American workers when we ended the NAFTA nightmare and signed the brand new U.S., Mexico, Canada. I saved the U.S. oil industry by withdrawing from the last administration's job-killing catastrophe, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. You ever hear that beauty? That would have really hit you. In 
2017, I signed a historic executive order making government policy to buy American and hire American. You know, what's this like? He's going to sign in front of buy American. Oh, buy it. I've been saying it for like 20 years. Where the hell has this guy been?